Thank you for joining this webinar held jointly between SWPA, Southwest Procurement Alliance, and MAR Offsite, one of our framework providers on our offsite construction new homes framework. Um, my name is Mary Bennell, and with me on the screen is Amanda Grimbleby from MAR Offsite. Um, I'm going to be speaking for about five minutes as an introduction mm -hmm. and then hand you over to Amanda. Uh, who will provide you with details of their offering, including videos of their production facility and, and some of their on-site installations. So this is the first in a series of presentations that we're giving, featuring our suppliers on our NH2 off-site construction and new homes framework, um, which all our, all our presentations, webinars will be featuring different themes. And what the, these webinars are, are aiming to do is to give you an understanding of the breadth of options that are available through our framework um, and more about our framework in a minute. So after we've spoken for about, it'll be about 30 minutes max, um, there will be a Q&A session at the end. And we've already had a couple of very interesting questions that we'll answer at the end. But if anybody else wants to join in and put, add a question, there's the Q&A button at the bottom you'll see um, and um, sorry Q&A button press on that and input your question down there uh, and then send it and we will pick it up at the end just to say that we will be we are recording this webinar and you will be sent out copies of it and a copy of the presentation afterwards and we will also be putting it on our respective websites so quickly, who are we? We're the Southwest Procurement Alliance um, and we are based in Exeter and um, we all live in, in the Southwest. Um, our purpose and who we are, well, we this is our motto, through improved procurement, we deliver better homes and enhance the local communities. Um, just to reiterate, we are a not-for-profit organisation, a .gov, uh, were established in 1966 by six local authorities in London. And actually, my employer is the London Borough of Hillingdon, which is interesting. Um, and we're bound by their protocols and policies and procedures. We are a national organisation with regional hubs. So SWPA is one of those regional hubs. And nationally, we were used, our frameworks were used for projects for a value of around 350 million. Um, we had 720 projects across the whole country, and the number of clients we were engaging with was 279. Interesting to note that, you know, 720 projects, 279 clients. So each client actually has quite a number of projects with us, which is a, a recommendation. Um, we have lots of frameworks, not just the one we're talking about now. Um, if you want to have more details, look at our website. Um, and we actually refresh them every four years. We're just engaged in pre-tender engagement for four at the moment. Um, as I say, we're, we're a not-for-profit.gov. Um, we do all our surplus, we recycle into community benefits. And um, here are some of the projects that, that we, we are supporting um, through our community benefit fund. Um, what we do is through Southwest Community Matters, who are an expert in delivering small, small grants, we do provide a thousand pounds to projects nominated by clients who are members free to join and have active projects. So some of the projects we've supported make a real difference to those small charities. We've got Easy Read Blanford, top left, um, supporting a literacy project. St Paul's Adventure Playground in Bristol, where we supported, paid for a summer play worker. In the middle, we have a playground specifically for autistic children. Top right, um, we have Rusty Road Recovery, where we actually uh, paid for all the setting up of a workshop for them, for, for mental health sufferers. And then we have uh, Thorncombe Village Shop down the bottom. And we have all sorts of other projects. Uh, we're supporting men's sheds in Bristol, and, and other things. So on to the framework that we're talking about today and that MAR Offsite are on. It's our Offsite Construction of New Homes framework. Um, and it is launched last May, and it has four categories, Workstream 1, Modular, Workstream 2, Panelized, Workstream 3, High Rise, and Workstream 4, <coughs> which are turnkey options. 
and you, we can also do supply only options on there. We have 12 suppliers on the framework who can be used across various options. And um, you may be aware that there are two ways of appointing uh, suppliers from our framework, uh, one through uh, direct award and the other is through mini tender. Um, in terms of direct award, you, if you really knew what you wanted or it was an emergency, you could actually appoint somebody within five days. Um, slightly unusual, but even so, even with a mini tender option, we've done all the due diligence, we've satisfied all the le legal and regulatory requirements. So, and we continue to do that through the life of the, the framework with our suppliers. Um, so, yes, so it's a, it's a fast and efficient and compliant route. Just in terms of what category one and category two are defined as, they're from the um, MMC definition framework. So category one is pre-manufacturing 3D primary structural systems and category two is the 2D uh, primary structural systems. Just give me a couple more slides from me and then over to Amanda. So what now in the post-lockdown world? I think we're all thinking, you know, there's a paradigm shift in the, in the construction market and we all hope there's going to be a paradigm shift in the construction market post COVID. And we do uh, think that offsite and digital be will become more prominent as people are looking to reorganize and restructure and re-deliver. Over the years, there's of course been many, many um, uh, initiatives, government task force initiatives to promote efficiency in construction, to promote modular. Um, I remember being really, really excited by the rethinking construction um, paper that came out in 1998 and thought, woo, this was the way forward. Um, more on that later. And, and then, of course, we had the government's industrial strategy in 2018, uh, you know, new construction deal by 2025, that's four and a half years away, reduction in whole life costs, 33%, reduction in the time taken from inception, 50%, and reduction in greenhouse gases. And then finally, just recently, we had Mark Farmer's report, Modernise or Die, talking about the skills shortage in construction and how we had to look at other ways of delivering, um, given the, the, chain, the, the requirements of the industry. Just recently, 1st June, Construction Leadership Council published a paper, which I think is a really good read. I recommend you look at, look at it. They have three phases. This is a bit heavy, this, this slide, but read it later. Phase one, restart, phase two, reset, and phase three, reinvent. And if you look at phase three, reinvent, transformation through sustained economic growth through the adoption of digital and manufacturing technologies to deliver low carbon sustainability and better quality outcomes. I'm quite excited about this, you know, maybe, maybe this will be the kickstart we are going to have in the post lockdown world. So if like you, me, when I was a client, you know, there were all these exciting in initiatives, government papers, but the day job got in the way, you know, there were all those requirements to deliver, you try to deliver, and the, there were lots of challenges. And these are some of the challenges that I used to have and that you have. You know, there are so many suppliers out there and I don't have time to go and visit everyone. Um, the advice is for early engagement on potential screens, schemes, but when should I do this and how should I do this? It's supposed to be faster and deliver improved quality, but that's not my experience. It's all been so complicated we've done. My site is for 20 units, but a number of MMC offsite providers say this is too small a number for them to be interested in. And what happens if I've carried out early engagement and have decided on the supplier that then need to carry out procurement in accordance with public sector procurement regulations? Well, as I've said, we've got 12 very different suppliers on our, on our framework and, and you know, we, we can guide you to an offering. We've tried MMC, it didn't work well. Um, you know, we had all sorts of issues on site. Why was that? And we want to set up our own offsite factory and then we'll be able to have our own designs and produce our own requirements. So there's lots of issues going on, things I'm speaking to people about. You know, um, we want to 
to work with you, our suppliers want to work with you to actually address those issues and move things forward and, and to promote successful delivery. We really feel this is this is the right time. So we are we do have um, a framework for specialist um, professional advice that we're going to be promoting. We've got an online event on the 23rd June, but there are other ways. Um, Amanda will talk to you about how she can accommodate people right from the red line just around a map. So there are various ways of doing it. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Amanda um, to talk to you specifically about her product and her approach to delivery. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing and Amanda is going to start sharing. There might be a couple of minutes whilst we uh, do this. Please bear with us. That's great. Thank you, Mary, for the introduction. Um, good morning, everybody. Just while I start to share my screen, if you just bear with me a moment. While I get this going. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you for attending the webinar this, this morning. Um, I'm really surprised on the, um, the level of interest in, in this, particularly in the Southwest. So thank you for taking the time this morning to, to come and join us. Um, my name is Amanda Grimbleby. Some of you may already know me um, because we're working on schemes in your region. Um, I'm the co-founder and director of MAR Offsite. And um, we are a, an appointed company to the LHC framework. A few things that we would like to cover this morning really is um, our appointment onto the framework um, and the process for, for doing that. Um, I'd like to share with you a completed project and some feedback from um, one of our customers. And that particular project was a retirement bungalow project um, in Brick House, which is in West Yorkshire. Um, I'll touch on why MMC. Obviously, there's a lot of discussion in um, the marketplace um, by government um, driven to deliver affordable homes at speed and quality. Talk a little bit about who we are and, and what we do as an organisation and a business and how long we've been around and our track record. Um, the importance and benefits of early engagement. Um, and I'll really touch on that because early engagement doesn't necessarily mean early commercial commitment. So I don't want to get the two mixed up, but I'll touch on that for you um, a little later on. Um, I'll talk about social value and, and how we engage with local communities and, and how that would benefit um, the Southwest region in particular. Um, I'll show you a project that is currently under construction. It's a three-story townhouse project in the Northwest and I'll show you, that's just left our factory um, a couple of weeks ago and is now on site. And then I'll show you a recently awarded project. Um, we're at PCSA stage and that's for a temporary housing project in the southeast of England. So our appointment onto the framework. So quite astonishing um, numbers here. Um, there was a lot of interest for the, um, the Southwest Procurement Alliance and the LHC framework nationally. As you can see, there are 191 organisations that expressed an interest from the OJU um, PIN notice. From the 191 expressions of interest, 16 organizations were appointed to the framework so um, it, it wasn't easy to get onto the framework um, and the due diligence was, was done in compliance with, with OG. Um, I thought it's important to show you this slide. Um, there are several work streams on the framework, um, two of which are for volumetric and what the other one is for a full turnkey and what I mean by turnkey is acting as main contractor delivering the solution for you from start to finish. Um, we as, as MAR offsite um, we are appointed to the framework um, in two work streams so units below 25 units and units above 25 units so we've got a real cross spectrum of, of delivery if you look at the map as you can see um, in the southwest in the southeast midlands in wales and the north um, the number one means that we ranked first for best value so out of the 16 organizations we were first for best value 
price and quality. And that allows you to do things to, to do, do things. So you can either direct award if you need to accelerate delivery of your project. Now that will save you a procurement time of anywhere between eight to 12 weeks. So if you do have a project that you want to accelerate delivery on, there is a mechanism to do a direct award. If you wish to, to do a mini competition, um, then there are 16 organizations that, um, that can bid for your particular project. So if I could just move on to well, why are we, we actually here? Well, we want to build better homes. We want to build more sustainable homes. But we don't want to just build them for now and for next week and next month and next year. We want to build them for generations to come, and particularly for those families who need them most and for the vulnerable people. Um, and we can achieve that together. So the opportunity, this is what local authorities talk to me about and housing associations quite regularly is that actually, if we work together, we can actually become the house builders within a generation. And that's quite a powerful message. Um, and hopefully that's a good takeaway for you, uh, for you all today. Um, I'd like to share with you a project. It's always important to talk to you about not necessarily what we're doing at the moment or what we're going to do, or it's what we've done in the past. And I'd like to share with you um, a short video. It's just over four minutes long. It's of a bungalow project um, in Yorkshire, and we completed it for our customer housing 21. So if I just press play on here, we'll be able to see the video. We're standing in one of five new build bungalows um, at Housing 21's Ward Court Retirement Housing Scheme in Brighouse. So this project, whilst only relatively small, um, was actually quite complex, mostly due to the levels across the site. Um, the project was designed and the planning approval was um, sought on the basis um, of a traditional form of construction. Housing 21 then decided to go down the modular route. And so we brought MAR um, in to deliver the project, but they really added value straight away by looking with their expertise as a modular contractor to make the, the project an efficient build um, and a cost effective build. So we had um, an existing scheme at Brick House, but we wanted to minimise the disturbance to the residents living on site. Um, so rather than look at a long, drawn out or protracted build period, we wanted to see if there was a way in which we could shorten that. And at the same time, we wanted to consider whether off-site manufacture was an option for us in the provision of housing for odd people. The project has gone exceptionally quickly. You're told that modular is going to be quick, um, especially when you're using light gauge steel frame kind of form. Um, but I remember from when the steel work to form the steel box in effect was lying in the factory. Um, but from, from then until when the modules were being craned into site uh, was five weeks. So from a standing start, yeah, very, very quick process. Brighaus is one that's quite special for me. Um, it's a Yorkshire project. Um, we work all up and, up and down the country. Uh, the reason I'm laughing is there's been three generations of story there, which is a strange one. We got involved with Brighaus and Brighaus had some quite keen budget challenges. Uh, the ground conditions at Brighaus were a little bit more challenging than, than, than on the projects that we've delivered. And we had to work really hard to find a solution that would be cost effective for the customer. Bungalows is an offering that has not traditionally um, been delivered in an off-site way. So for us, we had to challenge a lot of convention to make it work. And what we demonstrated with Ward Court at Rig House is that we could deliver ways that we could get to that price point, despite the challenges in the ground, and deliver an exceptional product that didn't compromise on what Housing 21 needed from their brief. And that work was a labour of love for us. As a development team, it's been really good. Um, um, some of the team went to have a look at the site last week and uh, their comments that came back were you couldn't tell that it was a traditional build uh, to the trained, let alone untrained eye. What was different was that you could really tell the detail and the quality control that had gone into the scheme. And um, for the operational teams, the scheme manager and our um, housing manager, um, they're over them and they think it's fantastic, the quality is great, we've got people waiting to move in. 
and the residents living adjacent uh, couldn't have been more pleased with the way that it went. They were really, really interested, really engaged and really happy with the way in which the building went. It's been brilliant working with MAR and I think anyone looking around these five bungalows and, and the quite vast external works and the challenges with the, the levels across the site, anyone will will acknowledge and, and will say to you that, yeah, this looks really, really good. Um, and the quality is high, if not surpassing kind of traditional forms, certainly. There's a number of examples that I can take direct comparisons between modular and traditional, and we'll say that, yeah, modular can definitely bring so much more control over the quality um, than compared to traditional forms. It takes that real team effort to be able to get that project from a project that on first glance wasn't viable. So a project that has been delivered on time, on budget, and is fit enough for your family to move into. So that's a bungalow project that we delivered for Housing 21. And uh, after we completed this, we went to meet some of the residents. And uh, this is Leslie. Um, Leslie had been on a waiting list for a bungalow for um, 12 to 18 months. So as you can imagine, she was delighted to, to move in um, relatively quickly. Um, and I'll just read the statement that, um, that Leslie made to us. Um, to me, living here has been life-changing or life-saving in, in every way. I feel happier and the ease and cleanliness of this scheme is just great. I have the opportunity to make new friends and keep myself busy socialising with court activities. I'm very happy living here and I absolutely love it. It's changed my life. So, you know, that's a really good success story of somebody that we could, um, could get moved into to a bungalow project relatively quickly. So if we can just move on to, so why MMC? And a lot of people are hearing about MMC. What is it? What does it mean? And what are the benefits to, to everybody involved? Um, I've listened to an awful lot of podcasts and webinars recently, in particular where um, the housing minister has been talking. Um, and a recent quote from the housing minister is that MMC is essential um, for post-COVID-19 recovery. Um, and you asked your why is that? You know, what is the reason for that? And, you know, you can hear that the government are starting to to really come together and say, you know, we need to build better quality homes for generations to come, not just for the now. We need to build a more resilient long term structure for building quality homes in a very efficient way, but at scale, because we've got to meet demand. We need to build homes that are greener and more sustainable. Um, we need to meet net zero carbon targets. Um, I've talked to you about how we do that um, as MAR. Um, reduction in fuel poverty is one that comes out, um, is discussed quite regularly. That's extremely important. Um, reduction of people working on site. Now, ultimately, that reduces the amount of accidents that happen on site. And also, it increases um, a better working environment for people working inside the factory. Um, the government also want to see accelerated delivery of much needed homes for families and vulnerable people that need them most. Um, I hear banded about continually about 300,000 homes that need to be delivered. And, and whilst, yes, a lot of those are being delivered and will be delivered traditionally, um, the, the demand is very high, but the supply is very low. So MMC can really accelerate that delivery. Um, as Mary touched on, there is a UK skill shortage. So again, this is a way of, of tackling um, those skills um, inside a factory control environment. And reduction in dependency on labour um, will ultimately create a more innovative and resilient and sustainable future um, for everybody. So as I talk to um, housing associations and local authorities and RPs on a, on a fairly regular basis now, um, I was keen to really find out what's important um, to, to them. So I just want to touch on a few things that, that people um, have mentioned to me. So we always talk about building quality, but sustainable homes, which are safe and secure for generations. Um, managing our assets. Now, some of you may have assets that are 
3,000 homes, 5,000 homes, 10, 20, 30. Um, and it's how you manage that in a, in a digital way. Um, and using MMC can certainly help towards managing that in, um, in a digital um, creative way. Standardised approach to reducing ongoing maintenance costs. Again, this is one that comes up fairly regularly. If you have a standardised approach throughout your region, um, that will reduce your ongoing maintenance costs. And I can talk to you about separately about how we go about doing that. Um, better design from the outset ultimately can start to incorporate life cycle costing. Now, the benefit here is, is that you're designing that in from the outset rather than it being on an afterthought um, that is timely and, and also costly. Um, what's important to customers is the local community and the engagement that we make within those communities um, and also minimising construction disruption um, to local communities, in particular in the southwest where you've got lots of rural locations. So minimising disruption um, to the construction of um, your homes. So who are we? Um, we're a people focused, we're a main contractor first and foremost with an with a off-site factory. Um, we build homes and not houses, you know, these are people, real life people with families and people who are vulnerable that are moving into our homes. We are privately owned and I'm one of the co-founders and directors of the business. We were formed back in 2007, um, so we've been operating now for 13 years. Um, so what you see is, is, is what you get. Um, we're able to build up to 1,000 homes per annum. And that is across two factory sites um, that we that we have um, and partnerships, really working in partnerships with our customers really does make us smile. It's, it's what we're really passionate about. And I think it's what we what we certainly do best. Um, we like to think that we're compelling in our approach. Um, and that's particularly important when working with um, housing associations and local authorities. So if I can talk about. Well, what, it, what does it take to deliver? And, and we're not just a manufacturer, we're a main contractor who will be able to take your project from a red line boundary right through to handing over the keys on site. So what we have, we have a 13 year demonstrable track record of successfully delivering multi-sector projects. And what I mean by that is, we're not just um, a residential and home manufacturer, we build schools, we build hospitals, we build KFC restaurants, we build office blocks, all modular inside a factory, similar processes, similar materials, just for a different market sector. So it's tried and tested. We understand the developer role, that's extremely important as well. Um, and we understand the detailed pre-construction process. Um, it's very involved, it's very hefty, um, and it's understanding what that um, process is. And we, we deliver projects turnkey from start to finish. 95% um, of our projects are turnkey. Um, the red line boundary, quite often um, housing associations would approach us with a red line boundary planning, say, what can we put onto this site? We might wish to put some bungalows or a mixture of homes or apartments, um, and we would help um, at that stage at Redline Boundary. Um, we regularly support small development teams at no cost. We know that you have small teams within your organisations, and we can, we can help you realise some of your um, smaller to medium-sized sites. Um, we engage with local supply chain partners. Um, we've delivered multiple projects in the Southwest over the past few years, predominantly for um, Network Rail. We've delivered projects for them in Truro, in Parr, in Tavistock, in Swindon. Think about four projects in Bristol. So we already have um, a supply chain um, base in the Southwest of, uh, of the country. So. Um, we're already engaged with them and organisations are already part of our pre-qualification process. So beneath the skin then, so it's pretty standard stuff. You know, it's not rocket science what we're doing. We're building homes, but we're just building them inside a factory rather than building them on site. Um, as you would expect, our, our product is BOPAS accredited. So for those of you that haven't heard this term before, it's Build Offsite Property Assurance Scheme. Um, this is an accreditation 
um, which um, is recognisable to mortgage lenders. So if an organisation or um, a developer wanted um, a product that was mortgageable, this product is. It's a light gauge steel frame, as you can see by the photograph in the background. Um, we use machines that take digital codes from our design office um, so we can cut and bend the steel ourselves in our factory under controlled environment. Um, we precision fix standard insulations, so board materials and membranes and insulations we use is what you use on a traditional scheme on site, exactly the same, we're just fitting it inside a factory. So 90% of external claddings we can fit in the factory to our modules and 100% of internal finishes obviously are, are, are compatible with our system also. Um, whilst we do have some standard house types, which quite often people like, um, we realise that you also have your own house types and we can tailor our solution to meet your, to meet your needs and your requirements. Um, each home leaves our factory over 90% complete. So we've got the external treatment fitted, windows, doors, bathrooms, kitchens, decorations, staircases um, are all fitted in our factory and quality check before it leaves. Um, we have over 350 individual quality checks per module. Um, and there's a checking process that goes along with that. Now, at the moment, we're doing that manually, um, but we're in the process of um, developing software to do that in a digital form. So that means we can share um, our quality checking process with our customers um, live um, on our website. So as you would expect, we've got all the quality badges that are all UCAS accredited um, with 9001, 14001, which is sustainability, um, and also um, health and safety, 45,001. So a lot of people talk about, well, what does early engagement really mean? Um, and it is actually key to success of any project. Um, but early engagement doesn't necessarily mean early commercial commitment. So please don't get the two, the two mixed up. Um, but what are the benefits of, of early engagement? Well, if I could just table a few is pre-planning engagement is where you're going to get best value. Designing to suit an off-site solution from the very, very outset of your project will just save you time, but it will also save you money. If you have designed a particular project or a scheme um, that is traditional from the outset, um, to enable us to then turn that back into a modular solution will obviously add time, but also add money as well. So what I don't want to happen is that you are paying twice in essence for, for that design. So just please bear that in mind when, when looking at schemes. Um, from the very outset also we'll design in some efficiencies. Um, so zero carbon and sustainability options. All our homes are all electric and we don't fit gas boilers anymore. Um, we can install ground and air source heat pumps and PVs to roofs and rainwater harvesting. So, um, but all of those things really need to be um, designed in and applied and costed for and programmed in at the very, very outset. Um, our designs are optimised as you would expect to meet NDSS standards. Um, but again, as I mentioned, that the designs that we have are, are flexible to meet your particular needs. Um, Collaborative approach, so again, early engagement is about being collaborative and understanding what the risks are, the risks of the project, um, and let's look to mitigate those, and, and that will reduce cost and ultimately reduce time. Um, benefits, again, accelerating construction. So you know, once you've designed it as an off-site solution, you're not having to redesign it, and again, that will accelerate the, the build process through the factory and ultimately on-site as well. Um, so what everybody wants and people ask for for this on a regular basis is we need high quality homes that are sustainable, but we need to understand that we've got some cost certainty and also we've got some program certainty um, and Homes England and the government say to me regularly, you know, we have um, lists of people waiting to move into these homes. So providing MMC and program certainty enables you to, to, to manage um, the, the volume of people. So a current project on site, um, hopefully you'll enjoy this, um, right next door to a canal. Um, it's a three-storey townhouse project in the northwest, 
um, and it forms part of a large regeneration project. So that's the CGI of, of the project. It's eight three-storey homes. Each home is made up of three modules. So there's 24 modules in total, so 24 lorry loads. Um, we delivered this project in BIM. So that's Chris, our um, senior design manager here, um, just working up the, the BIM model for that particular project. I'll share with you some slides going through our factory. If I click on this. So this is the Northwest Regeneration Project. It has an external brick slip system. It's fitted as you can see in the factory here. Windows and doors are all fitted. We've installed the internal staircase. The walls have been taped and jointed and, and started to be decorated. Skirting boards are going on. The bathrooms have been fitted out with baths and, and showers and all the pipe work that goes along with that. External lights have been fitted. And these are the modules being delivered to site. So pretty close to the canal, um, it's an eight point lift, as you can see the lifting frame, lifting the modules into position. And each module weighed um, approximately about eight tons. So, you know, relatively heavy, you know, with a brick slip on and fitted out with bathrooms and, and kitchens. But that particular project there is eight townhouses. We installed those over the bank holiday weekend um, in four um, consecutive days. And by day five, all of the eight houses were weather tight, um, installed and, and weather tight and secure, ready for final fit out works. So just moving on to what we're working on at the moment, we've got a lot of projects coming through the LHC framework in particular, and this is one that's just recently been awarded to us. Um, this is in the southeast and it's for a local authority. Um, they've awarded two sites to us, one of which is a 25 um, apartment block for temporary housing. So this is what the building is going to look like. And we've been awarded the pre-construction services agreement. And we're just going through that process at the moment. So as you can see, I've shown you um, some bungalows that we've um, delivered, um, some modular homes that we've delivered and also some apartments. So as you can see, it's all very bespoke to each customer. Um, and one size rarely fits all. Um, we do have a standard product um, that you may wish to, to look at, but we also realise that you like to see um, your own um, product into your own region. So serving the community we work within, again, very, very important. As you can see in the background photo there, the project inside of Ward Court project that we've delivered. Um, our site manager will become part of the community, part of your community, um, and he will embed himself into, into that. Um, we will engage with local supply chain companies, as we have done with the network rail projects, um, and we will talk to local schools and colleges um, and training centres um, to look for um, some apprentices um, that we can bring to, to our project in your region. Um, albeit 90% of works um, are fitted and completed in our quality controlled factory in Yorkshire, um, but there are packages that we do need to procure locally. And as you can see here, I've just listed um, a few that we typically procure. So we need an external ground worker and we'll procure that in your region. Um, hardened soft landscaping needs to be procured. Plant and equipment, so obviously we need welfare facilities and things like fencing and craneage and access equipment. Floor finishes, so if we're um, providing the floor finishes to, to each home, again, we can supply and fit that locally using local um, supply chain companies. Um, we need some local labour on site and we need to clean the homes um, before we hand over to the customer. So we need to appoint local cleaning organisations. Um, and our installation team, although we're coming from Yorkshire, um, they will be staying in your local hotels and bed and breakfast. So as you can see, although a lot of work is carried out in Yorkshire, we still need to carry out a lot in your region. So just wanted to show you some other because we are a multi-sector organisation, just wanted to show you um, some other modular 
um, projects that we've delivered. So this was a particularly interesting one. It took three years to come to fruition, um, but this is a site that's up in Liverpool. So I'm just trying to demonstrate, um, this also is, is modular. Moving on to a school that we've delivered in Croydon. Again, that is a, a brick slip system. That's the internal um, finish to the corridor. This is a project again procured through LHC's schools framework up in the northeast of England. And that is the classroom to it. The corridor was quite an interesting one because classrooms on either side seemed to be quite, you know, quite dark. So the school really wanted to, um, to bring in some natural light down the corridor. Um, and we put in a substantial roof light, as you can, as you can see there. This is an office block that we delivered for um, a FTSE 100 organisation who wanted a, um, a temporary decamp facility. So as you can see, it's pretty bespoke to the customer's needs. So I'm just really trying to demonstrate that offsite has been around for, for quite some time now. Um, it's not new by any means, and, and we've been delivering restaurants and hospitals and schools for, for a number of years now. So just wanted to demonstrate that, um, that it's not new. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation today. We'd really love to work with you. Um, and let's make some homes happen. So thank you so much for your time today. Um, really appreciate that. Um, we do have some questions. Um, hopefully we've got some more questions coming through. Um, but we've already had some pre-submitted questions. So maybe if I just go through those first, and then if Mary, if any other questions have come through whilst I've been talking, maybe we can answer those as well. Okay, right, so the first question here, um, how do we create a large enough sort of buying club to create sufficient demand um, at local level um, to make it sufficient for MMC to come to the region? Um, as you can see, I've demonstrated we have delivered some smallish projects, you know, five bungalows and eight, um, eight homes and 25 apartments. Um, but actually, the real sweet spot for efficiency is, is around 30 homes. Now, those 30 homes can be 30 homes on one site or can be 30 homes across multiple sites. So what I'll say there is that that's where the efficiency really comes in from a cost and a programme point of view. So the more housing associations and local authorities that can work together and aggregate some, some level of demand um, will certainly be more, uh, create best value for you. So that's the first question. And the second question, um, what support, whether that's financial or other, does the MMC provide a sector require from central government? Um, to really increase input. Um, to be honest, we've, we've been operating for 13 years, so we're not a new startup business. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. Um, but what we need, um, and we have tabled this to Homes England and, and the Minister, is, is really to increase the output, is to streamline um, the planning and building regulation process. Um, and to just make that easier for sites um, to, to be realised. And the more that that's done, the easier then um, it is for the industry to start to, to, to really scale up. Um, so hopefully that's answered um, that question. And the final question just that's on the pre-submitted is, we've had issues with MMC in the past, and the MMC provider was unable to deal with um, the groundworks, um, which really left us with a disjointed project and what is the sector able to do to provide a one-stop service for users? Well, hopefully I've demonstrated that today, that there are organisations that um, are on the framework that will provide just the homes only, but that there's also a work stream for the, a main contractor with a factory, which is what we do. So, so that would really negate that just disjointedness for you if you were to procure a turnkey solution. Um, so hopefully that's answered um, those questions. Um, have we got any more questions coming in, Mary? Yes, we've, we, <clears throat> hello, back again. Yes, we've got three, so I'll put them up and read them out. Um, so we've got one here. Hi, Amanda, good presentation. 
Thank you. Could you tell us how, as a steel framed build using some traditional building materials, you achieve zero carbon? Right. So we've we've add to that um, some sustainability options. So we'll start putting in. We, we go all electric first and foremost. Um, our EPC rating in terms of the insulation values um, is currently at a B. So we're working on moving that up into um, an A. We also put in um, PVs um, to the to the roof. Um, we do green roofs as well, um, if required to, to do that. Um, and ground and air source heat pumps is, um, is really an efficient way to, to get to that, that net zero. So, so they're the things that we've been doing to, to our structure to, to ensure that we, uh, that we do that. And, and we, we mustn't forget that the, the light gauge steel frame structure is linked back to our boat pass accreditation, which provides a 60 year structural design life on the light gauge steel frame. And that's what the boat pass accreditation does. That's recognized, as I say, by mortgage lenders. So hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to ask the third one, answer, put the third one now, and then we'll come back to the second one because it sort of is a link on. It says, You've mentioned zero carbon options. Does this take account of embodied carbon? Um, yes. So we're working hard behind the scenes on working with housing associations and local authorities to ensure that we have the right solution um, for you to, to do that. We are at the very early stages of that process, as you can imagine, but we're working with um, housing associations and local authorities to, to ensure that we um, continue our design solution um, with that in mind. So absolutely, um, yes. And, and, and just to add to what Amanda said there, what, what we're doing is a bit of a project with all our suppliers, asking them about the embodied carbon um, in their product and, and, and delivery to site. So that's something that we're working on with all our manufacturers, uh, because it's obviously a very big concern to everybody. Yes, just sure. just um, to come back to the middle question, are there any insurance issues that you're aware of for the homeowners, tenants with modular construction? Um, no, we, if you look at the BOPAS certification, um, not only is it recognisable by uh, mortgage lenders, but also um, insurance providers. So um, uh, Alliance and BLP are all the insurance providers that are backed by the, uh, the BOPAS. So we haven't come across an issue um, at all as, as yet. Um, however, what I will say is that we were also going through the, the NHBC process at the moment, and we anticipate that we'll have the NHBC accreditation in place within the next three to four months. Um, so hopefully at, at, at that point, as you start to procure projects, um, that will already be in place. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda, but the eight, the three storey townhouses are for a private developer, aren't they? So therefore yeah. fully mortgageable and... and Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all um, BOPAS accredited. And again, this is where acting as the main contractor, delivering the full turnkey solution. So we are accredited for the turnkey, not just the installation and manufacture of the homes, but the turnkey when it sits on the exist on, onto the foundations as well. So that's really quite an important point to, to make. Um, yeah, and that will provide the, the 60 year warranty. Okay, thank you very much. And thank, thank you, A, for the earlier questions, B, for sticking with us, and C, for the later questions. Um, if you do want to take up any more, um, have any more questions or, or, or want to discuss, then either please do come to us. Uh, all our contacts are on our website or, or, or to Amanda. We'll all be happy to, to discuss. And as I say, what we'll be doing is sending out a copy of the recording and the slides to all participants. Uh, they'll be on our respective websites, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, do dial in for the next ones. But uh, I think this has been a brilliant start. So thank you very much, Amanda.
and the You're team and, and everybody me. else. Yes, for listening. Yes, thank you. Thank so, you. And hopefully, see you all soon. Bye bye. bye.